welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Once again, it's my privilege to welcome you to the broadcast, my friend. Thank you so very, very much for joining us today. Right now, my Bible is setting open to the Gospel of Mark and chapter 12. In a moment, I'm going to begin reading with verse 13. And if you can, get your Bible and open there with me. Mark chapter 12, beginning at verse 13. Well, since we are in the tax season here in the United States, it is rather fitting that we come to Jesus' thoughts on paying taxes. Now, frankly, I'm not a big fan of writing my quarterly payment to the Social Security people or, or, or seeing that amount of my money go out of each paycheck to go to the federal government. Uh, but that being said, I am really grateful for my country and for the services that, that it provides me. Two days ago, my wife and I had the had to have lunch out in a restaurant, and right in front of us, there was a lady police officer. Now, Nancy and I bought her lunch. Why? Because she helps protect my city, and I'm grateful. Police officers and soldiers are a legitimate service of human government. Now, some Christians have gotten caught up in a this non-biblical teaching that says that we don't have to pay taxes. Well, Jesus says we do. Well, today, let's talk about paying taxes from Mark chapter 12. Get your Bible open to Mark 12. While you're turning there in my hand is one of the gospel tracts that is mightily used with people that are in the military. It's entitled, Ready to Die. Ready to Die. This track is a true story, a, a testimony story about a young man who on a second tour of duty in the country of Iraq, fighting there, he was killed. But he was a mighty man in spirit. He was a mighty servant of God, as well as being, frankly, a quality soldier, highly, a highly prized soldier. This track, Ready to Die, is impactful. If you have sons or daughters in the military, if you have uh, relatives in the military, if you're looking to have a special emphasis day at your church on the military, if you have uh, are, are part of some military organization, I recommend this track. By the way, if you just have, want to impact men, this is a man kind of a track, Ready to Die. Would you please let me send you this track, Ready to Die? I want to send it to you as part and parcel of a sample packet of all of our English gospel tracks. Now, at the end of my broadcast, when I'm done talking, my announcer is going to come on. He's going to say to you some ways to get a hold of us. There's three of them in all. You pick out one of the ways that best suits you. Then you communicate with us. You give us your name and address. And in the very next business day's mail, we will send you that sample packet of our English gospel tracks. Now, we do tracks in many different languages. Many of you know I just got back from visiting the country of Cuba, and our tracks are being printed there. They're being used effectively, not just in, in the Spanish-speaking world, but in French and in Russian and other languages as well, in India and Pakistan, in uh, Myanmar, all over the globe. Oh, friend, if you want to know more about what God is doing through the ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated, oh, we would love to tell you that story as well. I want to tell you what, the gospel of Jesus Christ is still transforming lives, still saving souls, and you can be a part of seeing that happen as you give out tracks. Let me send you the tracks. This one in particular, Ready to Die. Well, right now, come with me, please, to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 12, beginning at verse 13, I find these words. 
And they send unto him certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians to catch him in his words. You, you do see the setting here. There's some people coming and their motive for questioning is not proper. Verse 14. And when they were come, they say unto him, unto Jesus, Master, we know that thou art true and carest for no man. For thou regardest not the person of men, but teachest the way of God in truth. Now I have to stop here. The, the hypocrisy is just dripping here. Can you hear it? Well, it goes on to say at the end of verse 14, is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Shall we give or shall we not give? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, saith unto them, why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny that I may see it. And they brought it, and he saith unto them, Who, Whose is this image and superscription? And they say unto him, Caesar's. And Jesus answering unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. Now, the whole issue of governmental taxation is one that's debated in every society and every era and, in, and no matter what form of government people find themselves living. The situation here at the time that Jesus was asked the question obviously is known to you. The, the Jews were not living in a democracy or a republic. They were second-class citizens living under Roman rule. Now, they were a conquered people, so paying taxes to the harsh, repressive government of Rome really got under their skin. Now, if they could have found a way to not send their money to Rome, they would have quit paying their taxes in an instant. But the day that this questioning takes place, the goal of the Jewish leaders was not finding a loophole in, in Roman law somewhere on how to get out of paying their taxes. The goal this day of these Jewish leaders, these religious leaders, was to get Jesus in trouble with Rome. They wanted Jesus in trouble with Rome so they could use the Roman government to do their dirty work. They wanted the Roman government to get Jesus out of their way. Eventually, at the end of this Passion Week, the Roman government will give permission for the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. They're, these religious leaders are going to get their way. Now, four words, all beginning with the letter I, will help us walk through these verses here before us. Let me give them to you now. In verse 13, I find the intent, the intent of the Jewish leaders in this whole situation. Verses 14 and the first part of verse 15, the word is issue. The issue, they come and ask him about the issue of taxes. The second part of verse 15 and going on to verse 16, the word is image. What picture? Whose picture is there on the coin? And then in verse 17, we find the instruction that Jesus gave. Now, it is this verse 17 that we need to get to, but let me once again simply say that the question being asked here reveals the heart uh, and the heart motive of those who are doing the asking. You and I need to do some serious self-examination when we begin to ask questions of the Word of God. Jesus may not be bodily present on earth today as he was back then, but he is here by his Holy Spirit. He is here by his scriptures. We need to be people who search the scriptures to answer our life's question. But we need to check out just what our motive is when we come and ask the Bible a question. Is our motive somehow to prove the Bible wrong? Is our motive to see if the Bible agrees with us or not? Is our motive to find out if we want to obey it or not? If we're putting up for grabs whether we're going to obey or want not obey once we find out what the Bible says. Are, are we asking the Bible a question so that we can, uh, well, find fault with our pastor and our parents or some other authority? Or when we come and ask the Bible a question, is it to honestly uh, learn so that we can obey and be blessed by applying the, by the word of God into our lives? Now, let's get back to verse 17. These famous words, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. You need some time to go back to Romans 13 and verses 6 and 7. Though there in that book of Romans, that, that treatise on the doctrine of salvation, we are told once again that believers are to pay their taxes. 
Now, Jesus here, in his, the wisdom of heaven, avoided the quagmire, which the Jews were trying to get him into. They wanted him to answer in a way that, that made paying taxes an either-or issue. We either follow the Roman government or we follow God. Either you pay or don't pay. Jesus, though, did not answer in an either-or answer. Jesus gave a both and answer. He said we are to both pay taxes and we are to give God his just due. Now, friend, our ultimate submission as believers is to is to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. That needs to be said bluntly, straightforward. Jesus Christ is our King. We have only one King, but there is a biblical level of submission to be humbly given to civil authorities. Now, being a citizen is a, of a nation, of a country, of a town, is not separated from our role as a believer in Jesus Christ. These two spheres of our lives are, are rolled together. We are to be godly Christian citizens. We are to be role models as citizens for other citizens of our uh, that are, live around us who are not followers of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to stop here. Uh, I've been involved in trying to make our our radio broadcast a two-way communication. I, I, want, I want your input. I, what do you think about this broadcast today? I want you to text me. Would you? Are you involved in text messaging? Text me the word gospel and text it to this number. Uh, here it is right now. I'll give it to you twice. And by the way, I'll give it again in about a minute or so. So if you're doing something that you need to stop and get where you can write it down, I'm going to give you a chance to do that. But right now, here's a number to text message me. It is area code 708-515-4086. That is 708-515-4086. Text me the word gospel. Now, as soon as, as, soon as you do that, I'm going to begin to ask you a couple of questions. And you'll be get to, you'll get a chance to rate this uh, broadcast. You get to help us plan future broadcasts. You can even ask a question of me. I would love for you to be involved this way. Now, before I get done, before I give the, that text messaging number again, let me make this final note. The Gospel of Mark is addressed to Roman readers. This story would have been a great help. To, to its original receivers as they were wrestling with how to be good citizens of Rome and as well as being a faithful follower of Jesus Christ all at the same time. To be sure, human government does not eliminate a believer's higher duty to God, but these two spheres of submission are rarely in an unresolvable conflict. So let's pay our taxes. Again, if you want to text me, here's that text number. It is area code 708-515-4086, 708-515-4086. Text me the word gospel. If you want to order tracks from us, you want to get that free sample packet, you need to wait for my announcer. My dear friend, if you're trying to win souls, if you're trying to be a follower of Christ and you're not paying your taxes, you're being, well, you're sinning. You need to obey God by being a good citizen and pay your taxes. To that, we all say, amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.